Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. In today's video, I am going to show you my lash routine for my very straight, very short Asian soldier lashes. And this is a routine that I've developed over many years of doing makeup. In this video, I really wanted to pack all of my tips, all of my best tricks and all of my advice because I've been getting a lot of questions about my lashes lately, about my mascara, some of my favorite mascaras. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using two different mascaras that I love and I'm gonna show you two different techniques to really maximize your lashes. Even if you don't have short, straight Asian lashes like mine, if you have better lashes than mine, then this video is also for you because guess what? If I can maximize my lashes, imagine what you can do with yours. So with that said, Remember to subscribe if you aren't already, hit that notification bell so you can see all of my Wednesdays and Sundays videos. And now let's get into this. My lash routine for my short straight Asian lashes. Let's do this. <laughs> let's begin. <laughs> Okay, up close and personal, zoomed all the way in so you could see me in all of my glory. The first thing you're gonna need is a lash curler and I'm not just talking about any lash curler. The lash curler that I am specifically going to recommend for this technique is the Laura Mercier Lash Curler that I have been using pretty much in all of my videos for the last year or so since discovering this lash curler. The reason why I love it more than other brands is because of how flat it is, making it perfect, making it more fitting for the flatter Asian eye shape. And I also love it because it opens up really, really wide. So it's kind of foolproof. Like there's no way you can miss your lashes. Let me just give you a quick comparison to say a long comb lash curler that I have here. I mean, the difference is staggering. This one clearly opens up so much wider, look at that. Just gives you so much more room and so much more flexibility. Also, let's compare the curve. So on the top is the Laura Mercier, on the bottom is the Lancome. You can clearly see that the Lancome is a lot more curved. With this type of eyelashes, unfortunately, it tends to pinch the corners of my lids and I just can't make it work. This one, on the other hand, grabs all the lashes. It's just a lot more easy to maneuver. So this is the one that I would recommend. Also, with this lash curler, it's much easier to curl your bottom lashes. More on that when we get there. But anyway, this is what you're gonna need. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to get all the way in close to the root of the lashes. I basically kind of just place this top section onto my lid. And then once I have all of my lashes gripped, I go ahead and I crimp. And I kind of like to give it like a few crimps, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just one crimp, because look what this one crimp does. It literally makes my lashes upright. And this is what you want to do in order to maximize those short, straight lashes. This is the only way to make them look as long as possible. I'm just going to show you this first technique on this one eye, and then the second technique using a different mascara on the other eye. So we're just going to be working with one eye at a time. Also going to curl my lower lashes. But first, let me just get some cat hair out of my eye. Meow. Same thing, I kind of just place it flat on my lower lid, I grip it, and I crimp it. Now, of course, I've had a lot of practice, which is why I can probably do it without a mirror, but use a mirror if it's your first time. All right, I've crimped it. Once you've crimped it, it's kind of hard to crimp the bottom lashes again, so it's like you gotta get it right the first time. Just try to go as close to the lash line as possible. That way, you maximize the length. Okay, so for this eye, I'm gonna be using my Maison Collagen Curling Fix Mascara that you can get on Yes Style or on Amazon, links below. This is an Asian mascara. I believe it's a K-Beauty brand. And although it's not said to be waterproof, it is almost better than waterproof. It does not smudge on my eyes. It does not smudge on my lashes. And the reason why I like to use waterproof or non-smudging formulas is because of this little fold right here. You see how like my lid kind of covers my inner corner. So this is called an epicanthic fold. This is very common in Asian eyes. Also just like in certain almond shaped eyes. And because of this fold, if I use a non-waterproof formula, it tends to smudge when I smile because it creates this little crease here. And in that crease is where my mascara smudges. So it becomes really, really unflattering. And because of my eye shape, I absolutely have to use a waterproof or a non-smudgy formula. So this one is my favorite one. The first thing that I like to do is basically add some length to the very tips of my lashes. I do not, and I repeat, I do not touch the part that I just curled. No, no. If you have long lashes, full lashes, if you have lashes that are not straight, 
then you can go ahead and get away with that. But my lashes, because they are naturally straight, they can not handle that extra weight of the mascara on the curl. They will absolutely fall flat the moment that I apply mascara to that part that I crimped. So this is a very, very, very important tip. If you're someone whose lashes cannot hold the curl, you've been warned. Do not apply mascara to the curl part. All right, so just with this trick alone, by adding the mascara to just the tips, you can see exactly what you're working with. You can see how many lashes you have. You can see where you need to apply a little bit more mascara, where you can get away with adding a little bit more volume, where you can separate them. So for me, it's looking like the lashes are just a pinch clumped right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this wand. And I find that the simplest wand is usually the best for my type of lashes. So I'm gonna use this wand to kind of just like separate and feather them, make them look a little bit fuller, just like that. Easy peasy. And already you can see the difference. It's really staggering. I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see what I'm working with. I really don't have much lash as it is, but with this mascara, I am able to build them up to this. So with these types of mascaras, I will say one coat is enough. They're not super buildable. Once you start building building them, the lashes can unfortunately get a little clumpy and look a little spidery, which of course is a look, if you like that sort of look, but I don't know, for shorter lashes, I don't feel like it's the best look. So I try to avoid the clumpy look. Instead, what I like to do is really build up my lower lash. Let's go ahead and get going with the lower lash. So same thing here. Essentially, I'm not applying mascara to the part that I curled. Instead, I'm kind of just like bouncing my lashes upwards and then also painting them down. So bouncing up, painting down, and then coating the sides of the hairs. Then I'm gonna go ahead and like brush some clumps out just to make sure that everything is to my liking. And then essentially, this is it. One more thing that I like to do, and you've seen this in my previous videos, I like to use a liquid liner to add little lash extensions, twiggies, to my lower lash line, just to make it look a little bit fuller. Since first showing you that technique that I've been doing with a liner, I found this uh, NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Marker, which is much finer than a liner. So today I'm gonna use this product just to add some tiny little strokes on my lid in those spaces where I'm missing some lashes. Now you've seen me do this before, this isn't anything new, but I figured I'd also include this technique just to show you how to really fully maximize your lashes or the look of your lashes. I feel like that is enough for this eye. Let's do a little comparison. All right, and there you have it. Of course, once everything has a chance to dry down, you can always go over the tips once more and add a pinch more length and volume, but I don't recommend doing that with this particular mascara. It doesn't build up very well. I feel like it's best with just one coat. So one eye is done. We're gonna move on to the next eye. So the reason why I'm doing two separate mascaras for the two different eyes is because I just wanted to show you different techniques. And I also wanted to show you a non-waterproof Western formula. So not a K-Beauty mascara. Crimping all the way at the root to make them upright. I don't know why this is harder to do on camera than when I do it off camera. All right, I got it. Boom, beautiful. So for my second mascara, I'm gonna be using this Wet n Wild Big Papa mascara that I just recently discovered, I actually did an Instagram campaign for this mascara and honestly, it's like my latest favorite discovery for mascaras. Another non-waterproof formula that magically works on my lashes and on my eye shape. I don't know how they did it, but they did it and I'm here for it. So again, using the same technique, just coating the tips of the lashes. The only difference with this mascara, and just a staggering difference that I find between K-Beauty mascaras and just like Western non-waterproof formulations, is that the non-waterproof formulations can be built up like beautifully without clumping. They're a lot more liquidy, I would say. And so because of that, they do a great job of just like sticking to itself. All right, so this is one coat. You can see that this is a lot more smooth, a lot less clumpy than here. So if you like this look, you can literally stop right here. I'm gonna keep going because I wanna show you how well you can build up your lashes with this mascara. The wand here is pretty big, so if you have small lids like I do, you could potentially get some mascara on your lids, but I'm not really so worried about this at this moment. You know, mascara is really easy to remove from your lids once it's dry, so that's really a non-issue for me. What I really 
really care about right now is separating and fanning out the lashes as much as possible. So you can kind of see I'm doing that already here, making sure that the center points up towards my brow and then brushing and fanning out the sides kind of towards the tail end of my brow and towards my temple. Again, avoiding that part that I crimped, but essentially this is one coat. I'm gonna allow that one to dry and then I'm gonna work on my lower lashes. Okay, so this is like a lot of lower lash for me. I never see my lashes looking like this with any other mascara. They look super long for me, super fanned out, very defined. I just, I really love the look of this. I also really love the look of this. And I don't know, maybe to an untrained eye, they look exactly the same, but to me, they're slightly different. This one is a lot more, I would say sleeker and longer, whereas this one is a little bit more fuller and the shape is different. All right, so now I'm gonna build this lash up just to show you how easily you can do it. Again, you have to allow this first coat to dry thoroughly and then continue adding the mascara to the tips only, pulling the product up like that. I'm gonna take one more coat. So this is like coat two and a half and I'm basically going to gently press that to the width of the lash just to give it a little bit more volume because this is what creates that volume, those little tiny lashes that are in between. So this is what's also gonna make your eyes look bigger. So it's gonna make your lashes look more voluminous. Basically, you can just continue on with this technique. Keep on building the length and also the volume. I literally, I have to tell myself to stop at some point because I can easily go overboard with this technique, but this is definitely a lot for me. I feel like it makes my eyes look a lot bigger and a lot brighter than before. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the lower lashes, but just being a little bit more careful. You know, I don't want the wand to touch my mascara or anything like that. So I'm just strictly touching the lashes, the tips and the width like that. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna stop my routine here. I feel like I've done the most with my lashes on both sides using the Maison K Beauty mascara on this side and the Western Wet n Wild Big Pop mascara on this side. I was able to show you kind of like my two different techniques that I like to do to build up the volume and also the length and also just to maximize that curl, maximize all of your lashes, not just the longer ones, but also the shorter ones, also the bottom ones. I'll also show you how to preserve the curl, how to maximize the curl. I really hope that you guys find this video useful. I really wanted to pack it with all of my best tips and tricks and advice that I have learned over the years. I am someone who's kind of like obsessed with perfecting my lashes. I wasn't born with naturally full long lashes. So I wanna work with what I have and I wanna make the best of it. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know which technique or which tip was your favorite. Which one are you gonna utilize? Also tell me which side you like best. Do you like the Big Pop Wet and Wild side or do you like the Maison Collagen Fix side? These are both my favorite mascaras that I have been using over the last couple of months or so. It's just like something that I'm gravitating towards and I would totally recommend both of these to you guys. So with that said, let me just model my lash looks for a quick sec before zooming on out. And on that final note, I am going to say goodbye to you all. Check out my other videos right here because you got nothing better to do. I know it. It's Wednesday. There's nothing else to do. Mwah. Love you guys.